I would like to explain first who we are and mostly how we work because this is very important for the architecture we develop to understand the architecture we develop. We are a office in Germany with a branch in Los Angeles. We are right now 45 people in Germany and 6, 7 people in Los Angeles. So compared to most offices you have seen here, we are rather small practice. The practice has a long-standing tradition because it was founded by my father in 1953. And I joined the office in 1987. And we established a parallel office, second office in 91. And since then have been working in two offices parallel. And my father is now 83, retired last year, and we rejoined the offices. So that the office history is short. We work in partnerships. In partnerships organized the office partners, but the, uh, right now I'm working in a partnership with four partners, which is Martin Haas here, David Cook, and Christoph Janssen. But the partnership goes beyond that. It goes also it shows the way we are working with our architects. Usually young architects join our office after they have finished their studies. And then we train them in our office. And they, in average, would stay between three and five years and then move on. In a and the way we work, it's a little bit like an extended study. The young architects are responsible for the work that they do. They are responsible for the way we develop architecture. We, the partners, don't give them final solutions. We don't give them sketches and hand it down the assembly line to finish it up. That's not our way. I think the strength of our office has always been to motivate young people who have chosen to be architects to contribute the best they are able to contribute. And our, the partner's role is to guide that, to keep it within the corridor we consider essential for our architecture and to motivate or to push the right ideas. For the beginning, I want to show you a project which can describe quite well the way we work. It's a project. We are right now in the design phase. Construction hasn't started yet. It is a, actually it's two administration buildings for the Comune di Ravenna, it's in Italy, and it was a competition we had won. Maybe at this point I have to say we acquire almost all our projects through architectural competitions. Out of the Let's say 140 buildings my father and I have built combined together. Well, only six or seven were direct commissions. Everything else is through architectural competitions. That is a little bit based on the history of post war Germany, where the competition system was established because we had in Germany after the war to build so much. So many people, not much space, growing population, because they moved from the east to the west. 
So Germany was thirsty. So we had to build schools, hospitals, everything. And to regulate that, to bring that in an acceptable, regulated channel to avoid corruption, they had to establish an objective system. And that was the architectural competition system. We are losing it a little bit right now, but after all, it was a good system. The way we approach the job, here in Ravenna, it was quite in, and quite interesting for us. They gave us a master plan which asked for a, you see it up here, for a round building around it. We didn't really know why until we found out they had built a stadium at this place, planned a stadium, and the foundations were sagging away, didn't hold up, so they abandoned the stadium. But to cover the foundations, they wanted to build a round building on top of it, so nobody finds out what's going on. And we could convince them to work differently, to, to say, you know, these old foundations, who cares? Let's cover them. And so here you see that's what they wanted to do, and to do. And we convinced them slowly in various different here it's still very close. And suddenly it, it gets more and more diverse, more and more different. And that's, that shows pretty much the way we usually develop our ideas with our architects. They, they develop alternatives on the basis of a program and a framework. And then from there we take it on. And then we choose together the best ways to follow it up. And in the end, that was it. Now, this is existing. We, we are not involved in that. These are the two ones we are involved. Let, let me talk briefly about the criteria we see in the architecture. Architecture is a very developing architecture. It's a very integrated process for us. Many disciplines are involved. There are the strong disciplines like the financial aspects, timeline, program. They can take care of themselves. We don't have to take care of them too much. They are the strong disciplines. And then they are the weaker forces, which usually get abandoned the first when you run into problems, which is quality, space, sustainable aspects. They are usually overboard right away when you run into problems. We all know let me talk very briefly about the aspect of sustainability. We all know right now that's a very fashionable term. A lot of the big commercial architectural firms embrace sustainability, but more or less as a lip service. Because it, as someone told me, it's sellable right now. Now, I see sustainability broader. First of all, I don't think we, we are doing our environment a big favor if we conceive it only as a sellable product. I think we have to see sustainability in the broader context of quality, living quality, not energy alone, usability of a building, durability of a building, flexibility of a building, changeability of a building. The most sustainable building is probably a building you could use as a parking structure, a living place, a laboratory building, and an office building. Because we don't know.